Hello, this is a video for IME 315, Financial Decision Making for Engineers. My name is Leah Schlemer, and this video covers after-tax cash flow calculations. Now, we've looked at this particular cash flow calculations on and off throughout the um, quarter or throughout the topics, but this is um, a little bit more consolidated look at it. So when we look at the five topics that are covered in this class, this particular um, topic falls under investment analysis. So for sure, what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out what is the cash flow associated with a particular investment. So we have an investment amount that begins in time period zero that needs to be depreciated for tax purposes. So what we need to do is then calculate what is the after-tax net cash flow from in this investment. We need to do things like calculate depreciation in order to figure out what that tax flow is. We need to calculate taxes. And then we also need to include other things like working capital or sale of assets. So this is our general calculation of um, cash flow. So let's go through it step by step. The first item, revenue, is often the volume sold times the price per unit of the sales. So in this case, 1,000 units at $10 a unit. Cost of goods sold is the 1,000 units, the same volume that we sold, but at the cost of the variable cost for these units. Then we take that difference in that is gross margin. We also subtract from that overhead or, material or operating costs that we include, which are material supplies, rent, things like that. And then from that, we subtract depreciation, which is the equipment cost that's spread over the life of the equipment. So if we refer to the other depreciation videos, you know what I'm talking about here. Um, and then the taxes is going to be the taxable income, which is the difference between the gross margin of $7,000 in this case, minus $2,000 operating expense and minus $1,000 depreciation. That's taxable income. And then we multiply that by the tax rate that most of the time we're going to be using a 28% tax rate. And then to get net income, we take the difference between $4,000 and $1,120 to get the $2,880. Now we add back depreciation because it's a non-cash expense and what we're trying to get to is cash flow. So our total cash flow is 3880. If we notice the depreciation above is subtracted and then right here is added back. So it negates the effect of depreciation into cash flow. So let's look at this as another another way of calculating this. One of the things we can also do is take revenue, which is a cash item, cost of goods sold, which is a cash, and then the difference is gross margin, the same as on the, um, the cash flow statement on the left. We can take out operating expense that gives us pre-tax cash flow, and then we can take out ca taxes, which will give us tax cash flow. So that is all of the cash items there are listed on the right. The problem is that in order to calculate taxes, we need to do sort of a subroutine calculation. These can be transferred right over from the, um, from the left-hand column ca um, income statement. But in order to calculate taxes, we need to include a, a sort of subroutine here where we take pre-tax cash flow minus depreciation as taxable income, and then we take the 28% to get the tax number. We'll bring that back up here to get the total values. So you can see that no matter which way we do the calculation, our cash flow is still 3880. Um, and some people prefer to do it the way that's on the left, and some people prefer to do it on the right. Accountants and business people will often do the calculation that's on the left. Um, engineers often do the one on the right, but I it's my belief that you're going to need to talk to people in accounting, so it's better to get used to doing it um, in, in the way that's on the left. And that's what I will be mostly doing in these videos. Um, so depreciation, just so you remember, it's a write-off for capital expense, and it's the cost spread over the life of the asset. And you can refer to the videos on depreciation if you kind of forget that part. So let's look at an example. The company you work for is considering an investment in a new assembly line. The line will allow the company to sell 10,000 units per year for $5 per unit each. The new assembly line will cost $50,000 and will last for five years. So I'm, tell I'm telling you to use straight line depreciation. The costs of raw material and labor are $2 per unit and the ongoing operating costs are $2,000. The tax rate is 28%. Is this investment justified using NPV at 10%? So what we have is we have this cash flow where we're going to be investing 50000 and we really want to know what are the after-tax cash flows for the five, year of, five years of this project. 
So we have, I took all that data here and I put it 10,000 units, $5 a unit sales price, $2 a unit cost of goods, operating expenses, 2,000 per year, tax rate, interest rate, and life. So I'm going to go ahead and put these values in here. The first thing I'm going to do is calculate depreciation. I'm using straight line. So I use the equation for straight line that's right there. I have no um, salvage value. So I just take the 50,000 and divide it by five and it's $10,000 per year. Um, and then I put revenue. So sales is $5 per unit times 10,000 units, which is $50,000. Cost of goods sold is $2 a unit times 10,000 units, which is 20,000. So then I can get gross margin at 30,000. I put in operating expense and then I do a calculation for taxes. So my taxable income is 18,000 when I take 30,000 minus 2,000 minus 10,000 is 18,000 times 28% is 5,040. Then I get my net income from that, which is going to be 12960 Then I add back depreciation because it is a um, non-cash item, and I get cash flow of 22960 So now I actually have my um, cash flow number. Let's go ahead and look at the parallel calculation here. So what I've done here is I just brought over most of those co costs, and I'm doing the tax calculations separately, which is going to be the same values, but just a separate calculation. And it's going to get me the same answer, 22960 so I put this out for the five years of the project. Um, in this particular case, every year is the same. So it's just going to be laid out in a spreadsheet form. But often this is not true when you're doing a investment analysis. So now I have sort of an A value. If you remember, A in engineering economy means equal payments for uh, for N time periods. So it's 22,960 for five years. Um, this is what the cash flow looks like. And then I do a net present value on this, and I get the 37,036. Um, and that would be the answer for net present value. So this particular um, video covered investment analysis about the overall picture of calculating um, after-tax cash flow.